Good afternoon and welcome to another Directors Conversations webinar. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for logging on and, and taking the time out. Today what we're going to be doing is um, digging a little bit deeper than we have in previous times in terms of the roles and responsibility or the role and responsibility of directors. My name is Roger Hitchcock. I'm a senior partner with the Sadar Group and I'd you know, really like to share some of what I've, I've, I've come across experienced learned myself over the last 10, 11 years, 12 years of training in, in boardrooms. I think one of the challenges is we've seen and we spend quite a bit of time talking about you know, what the direct, the duties of directors are, the legal responsibilities of directors are. Um, and unfortunately, what they can do is create this impression that as long as we tick the, the law box, um, we're doing fine as directors. What I'd like to do is I'd like to in a sense, go a level deeper and say, to go beyond duties, what undergirds the duties of directors? What underlies um, those key key directorship duties that are spelt out in the law? Um, so that it's not a case of necessarily having to, but wanting to. Um, and so I call those the disciplines of directors. Um, as we go through this as well, what we're finding and the reason we do these directorship conversations or director conversations is we really want to continue to engage around, you know, what, what are the current issues? Um, this webinar is off the back of one I did last week where we spoke to the issue of director delinquency and obviously focused there on duties. But what are the current issues? Um, what are the issues we're all facing in our businesses as time unfolds and emerges also looking at trends and one of the key things we want to look at is is what what new things emerge um, this phrase we're hearing a lot at this stage um, in um, throughout the world is the new normal what does that look like the new normal will consist of things that we recognize and things we don't recognize um, and then specific topics as they as they come up. So as we go, it's also designed to be what I call conversations or working webinars. And so please use the chat box. Please use the Q and A conversations. You know to um, to to engage. Um, and I'll address those as and when I I can. But really, this is about a conversation, as much as it is about a about a webinar. As we as we move forward, if we think about Another thing this time is an opportunity to do, and I'm based in Pretoria, South Africa. Um, we're watching not just what's unfolding here in South Africa, but around the world. And a phrase I've, I've used a lot in the last few weeks has been that there's a, in a sense, we are all privileged to be watching a series of, of, of concurrent case studies unfold, a series of concurrent case studies unfold. And those are st case studies in leadership, they're case studies in decision making, they're case studies in response, they're case studies in strategy. Um, and I think if we look with those eyes, especially as leaders and directors in our organizations, we can start to recognize, as I mentioned, what are the key topics? What are the things we need to think about? But at the same time, as we are reviewing, in a sense, what's going on around us, and as we are seeing and watching um, sometimes with trepidation, what's happening around us. And we want to renew things. We want to move into this new normal. We, we need to intersperse that in a sense with the concept of reimagining. And part of this webinar, this uh, topic is to say, well, if, let's reimagine the duties of directors. Let's reimagine them instead of being a list of things, a list of, you know, thou shalt do this and this and this, um, that we emphasize the legality and the liability which are obviously there and obviously pertinent and obviously important. Let's reimagine them at a deeper level. What do they look like? What undergirds some of these things that we would call the duties of directors? But obviously the first place to start is to say, well, what are, what are those duties? What are the legal, di direct, legal duties of directors? And as I've put there, these are the have tos. Um, these are the things that, that exist for anybody in a position of directorship. And one of the key things that has happened internationally over the last, certainly over the last decade or two, and more so in the last 10, 12 years, when we've seen lots of legislation change and amend and be updated around the world relating to companies and to how companies work and how companies run, is we've seen a clarification around this legal duties or the legal duties of directors. And it's converged. 
so there, there's there's consensus that ultimately a company being a legal person that can do nothing by itself in a sense that has a life a contractual life a, a interesting kind of um, judicial or legal life but doesn't have any life of its own but at the same time can bind people and be bound by people or other parties can house assets can own things etc cetera, etc cetera. those entities need to have a party or parties that are that are essentially obliged to look after them and that's the position of directors directorship has in a sense morphed or amended from this thing of you know status symbol um, a hierarchy to a team of leaders that ultimately rests or sits in what is termed a fiduciary relationship with this thing called a company and so in the words that have emerged in most legal frameworks are similar to the cluster of words that i have here that directors are legally obliged to act with care they're legally obliged to act with skill they're legally obliged to act with diligence as they exercise or carry out this fiduciary duty so we're going to look at that and say well, what does that actually look like what does that mean in terms of some of the skill sets or some of the challenges on leadership undergirding that um, the other thing interestingly enough that the law is tending to do because for law to be effective at its most basic level it needs to essentially be able to do two things the first thing it needs to be clear about is what it covers or what scope you know where are the boundaries of this element of legislation so obviously traffic regulations regulate legislate how you know different vehicles are driven and have to be driven you know we have family law that tries to spell out the parameters around family relationships a tricky space in itself corporate legislation says there are these entities called companies and so the the, the boundaries are in commerce and business and those relating to companies the challenge is the scope of a lot of le the legislation is very broad in terms of type of company so firstly law needs to be clear in terms of what it covers the second thing law needs to be to be effective is it needs to be able to pin down or identify or find an accountable party in other words who can be held accountable for what happens in the space so the space is the clarity of scope the accountability has to rest on the shoulders of someone. When I'm driving my car, I am legally obliged to obey the rules of the road and the legislation, there's laws that govern that. When a company is acting and active and uh, you know, alive in a commercial e economy and in an environment, there needs to be people who can be held accountable for those actions. And that's essentially what the law is trying to clarify with the legal duties of directors and so there's a key point few few key points of departure as i as i have on the slide utmost good faith towards the company the phrase that summarizes the relationship directors with the company is acting in the best interest of the company and must act with the necessary scare, care and skill in performing their duties all right um there's acting in good faith best interest of the company which means if there's a mixing of interests in other words if i as a director have other relationships that impinge on the relationship i have with the company that could be deemed to be a conflict of interest and the law is almost assuming that if someone has other interests those other interests will override my interest and in acting in the best or me acting in the best interest of the of the company not using the position for personal gain what that means is not that directors can't charge fees because they are contractually obliged to a number of things and there is a requisite you know a, a requisite benefit that could that can that can flow but ultimately that i can't use what i gain as my in in the position as director for for my purposes alone i can't take that information and use it because the information doesn't belong to me it belongs to the company and then exercising the powers for the purpose for which they were granted ultimately authority as directors comes from the law it comes from the legal system we operate in and so that purpose the authority what i'm authorized to do is to act with care skill and diligence in my fiduciary responsibility towards the company so that's the legal the legal aspects how does that translate or how can we think about translating that into leadership into disciplines that undergird that what do we need to have in place to be able to act in that way and to fulfill those legal liabilities and legal responsibilities. 
what I've seen emerge in conversations with leaders around mainly Africa, where, where we've done lots and lots of work, but engaging also beyond that, um, and that's on the ground in many, many countries over the last 10 years, is I've seen something that I'm referring to as, in a sense, the new logic of leadership. And, and it, it combines, it comprises a few things and combines a few elements in a sense. The, the first one is that the law assumes that a board is a team of leaders. So the hierarchy we, we're, we're used to when we think about companies and organizations with one person sitting with supreme power at the top is not actually the law or how the law sees companies. The, the law sees companies a group of people who essentially have in their hands the accountability to put in place the growth. They are accountable. They're the custodian for the healthy development and sustainability and an overused word, but essentially the long-term survival of this company. And in doing that, there's a need to distinguish between what we as directors do to build or what we can build and what we are cultivating. And in the governance space, this is really important to think about. Because often what we do is we think that our primary role as directors is to engineer or construct the entity called the company. And there are structures and processes. And so policies, processes, all of those things would be structures that we work with. And, and obviously, we, we adapt and we change and we continually renovate those as something else is happening. And that something else is the, in a sense, the cultivation of this entity. And so when we think about things like organizational culture, we think about concepts like the sustainability of the business is ultimately the things we build and construct and engineer are merely to support what is growing through the life cycle or the life stage of the business itself. And so what's being cultivated is the most important thing. Think of it in terms of planting a tree. So when you plant a tree, you dig a big hole, you build something, you construct a hole, you put the tree in the hole, you then fill it up, you then put some things around the tree, there, there's some, some supports, you put another branch or you strap, in, in, in South Africa in winter, we, we cover our young trees with, with some cloth and some netting to protect them because it's necessary at that stage in the business. As the tree grows, we change what's constructed. We take away the previous supports and we put new ones on. Um, and so as time goes on, the tree itself is where the substance lies and not in the structure. And this is the balance that we as leaders in our organizations need to discern between. What are the things that we construct and what are the things that we cultivate? Which means undergirding the, 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 the legal duties of leaders in organizations are some deeper things that refer to actually how we act and how we view our organizations. And so the disciplines of directors that undergird what we refer to as the legal duties, I like to call disciplines of the heart, disciplines of the head, and disciplines of the hands. And these are the one-twos of directorship. So if we just go into directorship understanding the legal duties, the have-tos, We'll tend to, if that's our only view to this position or this role or this function that we play in our companies, we'll tend towards compliance and ticking the box. If we, however, approach directorship as how do we apply disciplines of the heart, discipline of the head, and discipline of the hands, and what do those look like? And what do we develop about ourselves in terms of what we can contribute? How can we discern this distinction between what are we constructing? How do we use the tools available, the structures available in our companies or around our companies or to build our companies in order to actually cultivate the right thing, the long-term survival of the business, the long-term growth of the business that sometimes necessitates very difficult decisions because we are not just building and destroying structures, we're actually cultivating something that has, in a sense, a life of its own. And so one of the ways to start and take a step back and say, well, what does this look like from a leadership perspective? And in a sense, what we're going to cover today is some foundations of what I'm calling disciplines of directors. And then, in a sense, a library of things that you need to think about. And when we get to that point, I'm going to ask you to reflect on that. 
and possibly drop some things into the Q&A box. Um, and some of the challenges, and so the aim of this webinar is to provide an overview of what some of those undergirding um, elements are, heart, head, and hands. But let's start with some of the words we use when we think about leadership and leaders, because that's ultimately what a board of directors is. It's a team of leaders that need to work together to lead these organizations that we are the fiduciaries. We are accountable for. We can be held accountable for, for, for them. Um, and one of the first ones is obviously the word, the word leader. And leader comes from the Middle English word. And those of you who, who, who know me know that I like, I like words and I like understanding where words come from. And what it means is to go to travel. And that's essentially what it sought to. So initially leading was simply going somewhere, but ultimately it came to mean one's conduct in such a way that one is willing to be followed or one is able to be followed. I often say the ultimate test of leadership is if you look over your shoulder, are you being followed? Um, and that's a different criteria in a sense to the person who says I'm a leader no matter what. Actually the ultimate test of leadership is do you know where the end result is where the destination is do you have the skill set to work your way through as you can see on this picture a, a forest or two and um, do you know what the path looks like but ultimately are you also the kind of person or group of people in the case of a board that people are willing to follow the word governance is another important one and that comes from the greek word kubernetes and so leaders are governors um, any leader in any context is a governor of the space that they're given authority or responsibility over. And so the, the, the leader as governor is the pilot, the captain of the ship, as the Greek definition says. And so there's a, there is, again, the directing and the ruling. But ultimately, undergirding that is also an understanding of where do we need to be, understanding of what do we have available to us, what capabilities and capacities does our, our boat have, the vehicle that we are we are captaining or piloting. What does it need to go through? And during these times, the waters have become very, very stormy. And um, there are lots of reefs to avoid in business at the moment. Some we can see, some we can't see. So thinking about leaders as governors also deepens the thinking from just duties. The other concept is one that I think is powerful because it's, a, it's the concept of the leader as coach. So often what we think about boards is we think about the board as the you know, the, the hierarchical top of the ladder in an organization, whereas actually the coach, and I love the French concept or the French word coach. Um, we often use it in, in obviously sporting context, but it comes from the word for a wagon or a car. And you see that in some languages and some, some usages that coach, coach class, we see that. But ultimately it's the concept that a coach takes other people from one place to another place. In sport, we obviously hope it's to the championship or to the final or whatever that is. But ultimately, the role of the board is to coach the company, is to be the one that doesn't play the game. They're not executives necessarily, but they coach those who are playing the game in terms of how to do better, how to improve, how to continually improve. And so directing the strategy, the purpose um, coming through from the word coach. And again, that's far deeper than just duties of directors. This one I like because it's really a powerful and it does flow from the concept of fiduciary. And this is the word custodian. So directors are ultimately the custodian of the company. That's one of the reasons why action can be taken against directors. The concept of that we unpacked, as I mentioned in the previous webinar, was delinquency. And that's an abandonment of one's post, in a sense, an abandonment of the entity or the party, the company, the, the person, legal person, that we are legally obliged to actually be the custodian of. The concept of protection, the concept of being a warden or a guardian, having custody over is critical to this concept of leadership. And you'll see how some of these come out when we talk and unpack a bit of detail around the three disciplines, heart, head, and hands, and possibly this talks quite a lot to the heart element. One that may talk more to the head and the hands is the concept of the leader as the conductor. So the leader is the conductor. And again, the metaphors sometimes fall, fall, fall a bit flat because we, we have a board that is the conductor of the company. But ultimately, the word conductor comes from the concept of bringing things together. Again, 
the conductor doesn't play any instrument. They may know how to play a few of the instruments, but it's, you know, it's unlikely that they'll be able to play all of them. But what they do know is they know how each instrument plays their part in creating the symphony. And I think that's critical as a board is to understand the different parts, not just the rhythm of the parts, but the loudness, the you know, tone, all of those different things are absolutely critical for a conductor to understand because they are using other people to create a symphony. And this is often the challenge of leadership is that what we do isn't done by ourselves. It's done with other people's hands. Um, and bringing it all together is absolutely critical. So seeing the big picture, in this case, hearing the symphony as it is being played in one's head is important. Understanding what does that mean strategically as well. One of the key roles of leaders and we'll also talk about this in terms of what are some of the disciplines or some of the skill sets undergirding the disciplines is that leaders in organizations are policy makers. They're the ones who essentially guide through policy. They guide behavior through policy. They guide the direction of the company through policy. One of the key things about policy is that if, 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 if strategy is your destination, where you want to be, where you want to get to, then policy creates the vehicle that'll get you there. And so it needs to be designed to do exactly that. It needs to be designed to give life to this legal person called the company. And policy comes from the French word polity, which is the highest level of organizational thought and action that must be designed or applied to achieve the fundamental purpose of the enterprise. And you can see that's why the order of, of, um, of, of disciplines is certainly hard because there's care, but then the skill set of directors is primarily a thinking skill set. There is certainly work to do, there's work of the hands, but often we think of it the other way around, possibly in management or operations, it's, it's, it's hand and head different, you know, um, probably interchangeably, but the significant skill set that directors need to be able to exercise are thinking skills, and we'll unpack that in some, in some detail while well, listing some of those skills and some of the different ways we think. Because if we can't think right, our companies can't act right. And obviously the bridge between thinking and acting is the policy framework that is designed and deployed to do that. And key thing there, linking it together, obviously, looking at strategists. The, the, the director is a strategist. The leader is a strategist. So the leader is, you know, they are a, conductor they're a obviously a leader they are a captain of the ship they are the custodian they are the coach all of these things but primarily the alignment role of a board is the strategist role the art of a general comes from that concept of seeing from a height and that's why i've chosen this picture because this is seeing from a height the strategist in the military used to govern or lead their army from the top of a hill because then they were able to see and that's a critical concept and a co critical skill set that directors need to have is understanding what they are seeing and how to interpret what they are seeing and then how to communicate with those who they're leading in a way that is relevant and responsive. And that's one of the critical challenges of, of, of strategy. Another word that I think sums up strategist um, that I really like is a definition by, by Henry Mintzberg. And he says that strategy is a high level stream of decisions. And so I could have, instead of strategist on this slide, I could have put decision maker. And so one of the key things about strategists and policy makers and coast custodians and coaches and conductors is they are involved in an ongoing stream of decisions. The stream of decisions is obviously governed by where we want to end up. It's governed by what we have available to us. It's governed or influenced by what we're going through. And so those are some of the things that integrative thinking required at directorship level is absolutely critical. Um, and so as we unpack this, what I want to do now is in a sense, start to catalog, well, then what do these disciplines of the heart, the head and the hands actually look like? What are the subsets? What are the skill sets that make up this? And, and the, the balance of this webinar, there's going to be a fair amount of information, you know, thrown at you, but I encourage you to look it through and ask yourselves the question, well, if I'm, if I'm ever accused of not acting with care, what does that look like? 
because those are what I would broadly say are disciplines of the heart. If I'm accused of not being skillful or competent, it's primarily a head issue. Do I, how do I think? How do I process information? But it's not just me, it's us. It's the team thinking, being caring. And then obviously, what are the key things we need to do to remain diligent, to be diligent, to act diligently, so that we are never accused of being you know, not diligent or negligent, which is the opposite, obviously, of, 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 of that. And so what I want to do is really pick up on this question and say, well, what are the subsets of skills? What do each one of these things, these things look like? And matching heart to care, head to skill, hands to diligence, for, for me, has been significant in working with boards. Because, you know, the care, skill, and diligence, we pick that up and we consider that, oh, well, that's what the law says. But when we think of it in terms of, well, what does it look like? What does it actually mean? What skill sets do I need in each of these areas to practice these disciplines? And so the concept of disciplines is also an important one because a discipline is something that is practiced consistently. You never become good at something unless you're willing to discipline yourself, practice continually in order to act in the right way. And so let's start with the heart. What are the disciplines of the heart? What do they look like? What do we, you know, looking at when we think and what is in, you know, this catalog in a sense of, of, of thinking. And these are really the foundational. So these are the core. They're foundational. They're primary. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because, and I use that phrase and I have often used it, rooted and radical or radical and rooted. And I, uh, in thinking about those, you know, the rootedness, because this is really what is important, is that directors are people who are rooted in certain core values, ethics, beliefs, because that's what we all act in alignment with what we value, with what we believe to be valuable. And the word radical, interestingly enough, is, is, the, is the Latin word for root. And so what we see is we see a lot of emphasis out there on being radical and wild, but actually the most radical companies are the ones that are the most rooted companies and the same with, 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 with individuals as well. And these are fundamental. Because if we don't have these in place, then we often battle with the skills and the diligence that flow. And so what is it, where does it start and what does it consist of? And again, this in a sense is a, almost a library of things that you can look at and say, well, which of the ones... Um, where do I stand on each of those? Which of the ones do I need to maybe pick up? And I encourage you to do that as I go through the, the balance of this webinar is to say, well, let me write down some of those things that I need to think about in myself because this webinar is in a sense designed to be an introspective webinar. It's looking in at yourself as, a, as an individual. Those of you who sit on boards thinking about the group of the board, do we have this? Do we have these? Are we exercising these? disciplines of the heart, head and the hands. And so the first thing it starts with is personal character and characteristics. A, a, a theme that has emerged incredibly strongly over the last 10 years in the governance space has been the word ethics. Ethics and morals and morals being how do we behave? So it's not just what we believe and what is invisible. It's not just the valuable, the values that what you believe to be true or truly valuable but it's also how those are exercised in what we do. It's standing up to what is not ethical and what is not moral. And obviously that group and the alignment together as a group of leaders who carry the same core sets of values is important. And the danger with these words is they're often invisible in our companies. The words are not visible, but the things that undergird these words are. So we use a lot of category words and you know, good sounding words in our organizational values, but do we really unpack them in terms of what does that actually think? What does it actually look like on the, on how, do, how is it reflected in the way we think and act in what we do? And that's why I also like to include in this curiosity and inquiry. I do believe that one of the fundamental characteristics of directors, and it's an internal thing, is to be inherently curious. We've all sat with those people who just, they just seem to have a good, not just mindless questions, but they really want to get to the root of an issue. And remember, that's what we're talking about here when we think about disciplines of the heart. Are we willing in acting with care to dig deep so that we get to the root of the issues that undergird what's actually going on in our businesses? That's, 
Another cluster is our approach. So here are just some phrases and some words that, that I think, you see the word care as a word that exists in many pieces of legislation, as I said, this care, skill and diligence, it's an interesting word because it's a word that has together with it, it's, not, it's, it's, it's more an emotional word than a technical word. And so what are the things that surround it are things like justice, equity, community, all right? Seeking first to understand. So too often I think what we do is we jump to the solution before we properly understand what the issue is. You know, we, we're quick to treat. We're not necessarily that quick, quick to diagnose properly. And that's an approach we take to everything in our businesses. Are we seeking for justice? Have we defined it? Because justice is an interesting word because in ethics, it essentially is, you know, so we think we can either, th either think something is just because of the outcome. We can think something is just because of the input. We can think of something as just because of the process. Around our boardroom table, we need to be having that discussion. How do we believe? How do we define these terms? And do we possibly include all three? What do we mean by equity and acting with equity and fairness? Because fairness is an important underlying principle of governance. Um, the fiduciary duty, as I said to, to the company, that role of fiduciary, good faith, care, um, understanding the impact. So it's not just about what we have available to us, but the approach of directors, the discipline of the heart is really asking the question, do we really understand the ultimate impact? And that could just be the interpretation of what we do, by the people that this thing impacts. Um, and it's understanding what, what, what I've referred to there as social license. And social license is an, is an interesting term because it has to do with your company's ability to continue operating. It's not the legal license, but it comes from the fact that your company has got, is, is doing something that is firstly acceptable. So there's an approval, there's a legitimacy means you're accepted. You're part of the, you know, economic ecosystem. Um, you're not rejected either by the law or by those who have to deal with you. But it's, it's more than that because social license, for it to grow and for our businesses to grow, we, mean, we need far more than just acceptance. We need approval and that approval is linked to our credibility where we start thinking, reputation, those kind of words. And ultimately we need to say where and when and how do we grow and develop trust because trust is becoming a critical you know, core feature of successful businesses. And when we are trusted and when we trust others, we are willing to be identified with them. And so understanding that and understanding how do we cultivate this thing called social license? Because there are things we can build, but ultimately trust, we don't construct trust. We don't engineer trust. We actually have to cultivate trust. And so the actions we take over time, what we construct, cultivates trust over time and that becomes critical. So our approach flows from our characteristics. And then lastly, the last cluster in terms of the heart and caring is awareness. Um, and this is often summed up in EQ. So, so not just having intelligence um, and cognitive intelligence, we'll talk about that in the next element, thinking, but it's actually awareness and EQ, emotional intelligence, hinges on this awareness, self-awareness and group awareness. You see, the thing is, as I mentioned, a board is a team of leaders. They have to together lead because they are together accountable. All right, I can, if something goes wrong, if I'm damaged by a company, I can take action against all of the directors together, collectively or individually. And that's the challenge is we need to be aware not only of who I am, what do I bring, what is my contribution, along with what I don't contribute, what I don't bring. What do I know? What do I don't know? How do I think? But then more than that, how does that lead to the group awareness? Who are we? What do we bring? Where are the gaps in the team? Um, and how do we fill them? What do we, do we know and what do we not know? How do, how do we think? And one of the key roles on a board, obviously, in that and bringing that together is the chairperson of the board. Because if they don't understand the need to be not just individually self-aware, but corporately group aware, um, that becomes really difficult. And then at the end of the day, it's the team of leaders that has to develop trust. I've got to implicitly trust the person sitting over the boardroom table from me. Why? Because I share liability, I share accountability, I share authority. 
I share everything related to the company with this other person. Now, the danger is those relationships often are not that not always that close because we need to bring some level of independence and independent thinking into our boardrooms. So there's a massive emphasis on independence and independent directors, which is fantastic, but ultimately they still have to be part of the team. And so it's balancing. And in a sense, there's this paradox between independence and interdependence. And I think holding that paradox all the time is one of the critical disciplines of the of the heart and so it has to do with the person obviously disciplines of the heart who am i but then who are we what is our position and approach to some of these things so as you've thought about that critical conversations to have around your boardroom table or have, have we defined what we believe is just and equitable um sustainability what community do we believe we operate in and how do we impact them? When we're making decisions and we're rolling those decisions through our policy framework through the company to the ultimate party impacted, do we understand that and do we take that into account in our processes and our thinking? And that obviously bridges to saying, well, let's think about the disciplines of the head. Disciplines of the heart, disciplines of the head. And primarily directorship is a head issue. Um, sounds strange. I mean, it's, it's obviously rooted in the heart, but our activity sitting around a boardroom table is primarily conversation and working at thinking together. And the disciplines of the head are the primary responsibility. This is the work that directors do, they think. And it's one of the key core features of effective leadership. It's what they do, what they need to do. Um, and so ultimately, most importantly for directors is they have to be good thinkers. But the challenge is in thinking is it's not me thinking of what I think should happen. It's us thinking of what we think should happen. And there's a difference in that. And so the process that governs our board interactions becomes really critical. The kind of information we get before a board meeting, what we do with it, how we prepare, we'll talk about that in diligence. But ultimately, the design of the, not just the information, but the process, the personal process I go through to prepare and analyzing what I'm, what I'm presented with. And then the facilitation of that conversation in the room around our boardroom table becomes absolutely critical. And if we don't get that right, we become a group of individuals sitting around the table and not a team. And so it's an argument about opinions as opposed to a conversation about a team decision. And that's critical and we often find that in boardrooms that if we don't learn to think as a team then it becomes very adversarial and very divisive and it's about who can win out at the end instead of it being about the company and the best interest of the company because that's actually who we as a team of people are there for and so it is about the perspective we take to information and in our thinking um, and so one of the things we tend to be good at and you'll hear me say this a couple of times but directorship is on a timeline. We operate in time. We can look back, that's the retrospective. And we look at that information in a certain way. We look at what is now, which tends to be introspective. And it's remember, this is not maybe me personally, but introspection into the company. What's happening in the company? Are we getting the right information about introspective, introspectively in terms of how the company sits? But most important, prospective, where are we going? What are we deciding towards and i think that's one of the key things is to get our perspective on what we're facing and what we're seeing right and this really rolls out in terms of what do we mean by this what are subsets of skillful thinking um and again you'll see there's quite a few lists and quite a few skill sets and quite a few concepts on the next few slides um Merely to try to unpack, how do we think about information? So do we understand how ideas and concepts are elaborated or unpacked? Do we understand the pictures, the images and the stories, the narratives in our business? Because information is often presented in ideas, concepts, images and narratives, all right? Can we separate analysis from imagination? And, and imagination is one of the most the least used, most important skill sets of boards. The word I used right in the beginning was to reimagine. Um, but imagining and foresight are linked together because that's primary. Unless we can have a picture and have a joint picture in the room of where we want to be, 
And think of this crisis. So what's happened in the last few months is most timelines in businesses have gone from probably a 10 plus year timeline. So many companies were thinking, where do we want to be by 2030 as we entered a new decade to the immediate? And so the last few months have been about thinking about survival. Now we need to lift our eyes again and start imagining a future that no longer looks like we thought it looked a year ago. It's different, substantially different in some ways, not so different in other ways. And so we've got to exercise foresight when we think about that. Inferences and interpretations, which is when we look back and we are inferring, we're interpreting, we're analyzing, it's a different kind of thinking to imagination. We're looking at facts, data, from the past that is verifiable and verified, hopefully by the time it hits our boardroom table. And we are doing that in order to look forward. So the application of that is important. And then how do we look at our current position or role? And so again, skillful thinking has to do with not just the, the, compo the components of thinking, ideas, concepts, images, narratives, but also the perspectives again on a timeline, foresight, oversight, hindsight. Because each of those different timelines on a business and the information that belongs to those time frames, we need to look at in a different way. Um, and so if we think about breaking down skillful thinking into different categories, there is some thinking that we are applying to learn and develop. So, so when we look at something in order to learn from it, it's a specific type of thinking. It's include certain skill sets and certain patterns and certain reflections if we're looking to learn and develop from that information. If we're thinking to imagine, create, design, innovate, we look at information in a different way. We, we, we're not wanting to create a repository, which is what learning wants to do, create a, a repository of knowledge. We're wanting to play in the imagination, design, innovate, innovation space. Um, it's different thinking. And so in our boardrooms, how well do we shift from learning possibly to imagination, to analyzing and understanding? And often we're, we're very good at this because the main emphasis of many boards has been to analyze and understand. But we look at that information. The way we think about that information is different from the first two. And then thinking to decide. So that's another whole type of thinking. Because we can analyze and understand without having to come to any resolution, any we can just say, well, that was really interesting. We did, and we can apply that to learning. We can even apply that to, to, to some innovative thinking. But when we need to decide, we need to understand that unless there is a specific directional element that comes out of the decision, in other words, it's weighing up of options. It's saying, well, these are the options. Which one is better? Because it's very seldom that one is good. It's not a switch. Deciding isn't an on-off switch or seldom is an on-off switch. It's normally a range of things that we need to, range of parameters that we need to position ourselves in and then take action. Because unless we actually decide and then do, which is you know, a different kind of thinking, um, thinking that leads to action, all right, we can't test it. Again, thinking to communicate. So skillful thinking, when we, when we have to communicate with different categories of people, when we issue directives from the board, do we actually ask ourselves the question, who's going to be receiving this and how can we better communicate? How do we better communicate also to relate and build relationships as well? And so I encourage you to just think about the categories of thinking that you are part of in your role as a, as a director. And some of the subsets of this, obviously things like information processing. Um, and some of us, again, this is a diagnosis, in a sense, an introspection in a webinar to say, well, which are the areas that I could do better at? Interpretation, how, how good is my interpretation of data? What is my reasoning and logic like? And what is our reasoning and logic like? What impinges on that? So reasoning and logic is often shaped by preconceptions, stereotypes, all of those kind of things. Problem solving. Um, they always say that it's, it's not always a good idea to get a good problem solver into a business because there'll always be problems to solve. But we do need to be problem solvers. We need to be innovative. But we also need to evaluate. Thinking in holes, the big dis difference between operational positions in a company and the board role is that in an operational position, you can generally think of your part of the big picture. 
Whereas when you're sitting on a board, you've got to understand the big picture. You've got to think in holes and not in parts or in fragments. You've got to be thinking on the business and not thinking in the business. You are leading, not necessarily responding. You've got to understand that there are also things we have to hold in parallel. I mean, in, in paradox, things that potentially are paradoxical, they don't make sense necessarily. They're two opposites, but they're, they're both necessary. And then what things do we have to hold in parallel? And that's why I use that phrase, balance and tension. Significant skill set around doing those kind of, those kind of things. Um, Interpretation, analysis, inference. Inference is a big one because what are we inferring from the data? And again, examining ourselves to say, why am I inferring that? So when I see this, why do I jump to that conclusion? Are there other conclusions that can be inferred? And this is why the conversation around the boardroom table is absolutely critical. Um, because the, the more we converse and the better we converse, so skillful thinking and skillful discussion are critical skill sets to have. Um, again, evaluation, explanation. One of the key roles of directors is to be accountable for everything that happens in the company, which means we need the art and the skill set of giving an account for, which is explanation. Call it justification or explanation or giving an account. Um, and then self-regulation. What the board doesn't want to do is just wait for an externally imposed set of rules. We see that now. Um, as countries are opening up. Some people have very good self-regulation because they are continuing to pay attention to the dangers and some people have none. They're waiting for an outside party to tell them how to act. And in a pandemic, we need self-regulation because my lack of self-regulation doesn't only put me at risk, it puts other people at risk potentially. And then strategy thinking. So again, just a list of things that are related to strategy, foresight design, architecting, how good are we individually and together at designing elements, working out scenarios, thinking about scenarios, unpacking scenarios, understanding between now and the future, what is moving us forward, what is preventing us from moving forward, trends, flows, assumptions, expectations, what undergirds everything we're thinking about, um, how do we design the elements of the business, the architecting of a business model? Do we understand the levers in our business enough so that we know where to put the focus and where to put the attention? Right now, a lot of businesses are being challenged because their business model, the fundamental assumptions of their business model have been damaged or destroyed or removed forever. The perception of value has changed, which means the perception or the way we build value has changed. And so our own mental models and what we anticipate feeds into that as well. And then performance thinking. So, so one of the key things we need to be as directors, and again, there's quite a lot in this, in this skill set because there's a lot of different attributes or aspects or perspectives on the skill set of directors and how much we actually can do with our thinking and our heads. So it's separating re the recipe from the result. Often what happens is we think performance is the outcome. Whereas the result isn't the performance, the performance gets us there. And so that's why I like to use the word and I, I borrowed it. Um, we've got to separate the recipe. What are the parts we put together from the result that we get at the end of the day? And how do we distinguish that? What do we measure in terms of the recipe and the inputs so that we know that we'll get, you see, the result is going to happen anyway. If we just wait until we get a result before we change things, that's too late. We want to work on the initial part, which is the recipe. What are the triggers in our business, the thresholds? What are things are contingent upon what other things, dependent on other things? Um, and then what are the biases? What are we looking for? Are we biased in terms of some kinds of measures over, over others? And that is reflected in some of the other things, things like questioning, curiosity, skepticism. How well do we listen? And skepticism, important word to think about, it's not criticism, it's what are we inherently skeptical about our own behavior and also you know, our ability. It's, it's recognizing that we need to be skeptical because there will always be gaps in our knowledge. Even as a team, there will always be gaps. We will always have blind spots. And so we need to be aware of that, not that we don't decide, but we recognize that we need to also listen, we need to use our imagination, we need to think very clearly going going forward um, and that sums up in a sense what some of the clear areas and maybe the, the last one here is understanding decision making the disciplines of the head because it is about 
decisions. What are the inputs of the decisions? What is the process of decision making? What are the outputs and creating frameworks that can guide our thinking? All of those different aspects which we've spoken about. Ultimately, we need consistent frameworks, processes that we actually apply around the boardroom table because that's what aligns us. So that's what leads to discipline of the hands. Um, and again, as we lost set of disciplines please drop any questions or comments into the into the chat box and there've already been a couple about you know the importance and comments are the importance of skillful thinking and i've unpacked most of that as we have as we have gone but thinking you know absolutely critical if we're not good thinkers then we need to identify the areas that we can improve disciplines of the hands are the skills and actions necessary to perform in the position of leadership. And I've chosen that word perform and the work of the hands is important because there is stuff that needs to happen. There are things that need to be done. And a big part of that is communication. Understanding that board members need to individually and together communicate in the room and out from the room. All right. We've got it spoken and written. When we're putting papers together, when we're thinking about it, the skills of writing are, are, are critical, especially in today's world when much of our communication is written. And I don't think we make enough use of good written communication. Remember, that writing is not always about sounding fancy. It's about being concise and succinct and getting to the point. But then also spoken. How well do we communicate? And do we recognize our own biases and our own challenges? in terms of the way we communicate. And then thinking about identifying indicators, measures, monitoring, the skills of oversight. How do we do that? How do we then bridge that into accountability? Acting objectively, giving and receiving feedback, because part of the communication flow around a boardroom table is significant feedback. The feedback loops need to be really tight. Um, reflecting or reflection. And then maintaining tension and balance between a number of things. And then observation. So, you know, oversight, accountability, observation. So what do we see? Are we looking for the right things? When I'm reading a set of papers, be it a spreadsheet or a, a, a document, or I'm reading graphs, or I'm seeing, looking through our marketing material as a company, what am I seeing? My observation, my perception, understanding the context. Do I recognize where it comes from? And we've seen often, there's conflict because there's a lack of understanding of the context and what it's for. And this is both conceptual and practical. You know, we need to be able to conceive of things in our mind, but we also need to bring it down to the practical realization or action and activities. And so some of the specifics are how well do we manage time individually and together? What trade-offs to make time-wise? You know, if you're a director of a company and an executive, your directorship role is far more important than your management role. Whereas often what happens is we allow our management role to override our governing role. Um, do we understand the, the business in terms of financial making, watching, assuring the money? Do we understand accountability, being held to account, taking account, delegating accountability, holding other people to account? Absolutely critical. When we respond to others, do we recognize that there's a skill set of engagement of communication, of asking and listening or listening and asking. Strategy, and again, without going through the whole list, thinking about the formulation of strategy. How do we architect governance? How does strategy flow into policy? How do we think about risks and stakeholders and reporting? And all of these different things are important when we are exercising skill sets. And so we often get this in the category of things that we unpack as a board, strategy, risk, stakeholder engagement, you know, compliance, conformance, finance. These are the skills that we need. We need to be able to exercise those skills, not necessarily as the expert in the room. In the team, we certainly need the requisite expertise, but we need a working knowledge of all of these things. If we don't have a working knowledge of all of these things, then we are will be challenged because we can't make sense of the activities we are involved in. And then lastly, just thinking around, and I do encourage you as we come to the last few minutes is to, this is possibly the most important slide from a work of the hands. It's about diligence. Um, I'm often asked the question, is there one thing that I believe would improve directorship generally? That's a broad question, but I do think that there is one thing. I do think that if, if I had a switch available to me that I could turn on 
overnight. It would immediately improve the performance of every single board around the world. If I had that switch, unfortunately it's not available, but it's the preparation switch. If I could ensure somehow that every single director arriving at every single board meeting arrived and they had read the board pack cover to cover, they had analyzed it, they had contextualized it, they had interrogated the data, they had come up with their own thinking, they had developed their own opinion about the, the thing so that they arrived in the boardroom not with a fixed opinion, but with a set of opinions that could then be shared with the, other, with the team who had all sorted out their opinions beforehand. And then the level of conversation would go through the roof. And I think this is really critical. And it's a good, a good way to end is to really say that that's the biggest challenge. And part of the preparation, obviously, is the specifics around a board meeting. But what we're trying to think about when we think about this concept of disciplines of directors going way beyond just the duties of directors is to say, what are you doing to prepare yourself? You may be in a position, but what are you doing to, what is your self-care and development like? What are you doing? What are you practicing? What are you continually working on in your own space, in your individual space that is you know, ensuring that you are improving your practice as a director? You're improving your ability to operate as a director. And so as we you know, close this, thank you for taking the time to, to, to join. Thank you for, for you know, some of the things that have, that have come through. I've spoken to, spoken to the, the, the vast majority of them. Um, but thank you for thinking about your deeper role of directors. And I do encourage you. It is a Friday. Um, this is when the webinar is done. You may not be listening to it on a Friday, but it's a good thought to go into your weekend with is what are you taking into your role? What one thing? Do you have to think about the way you think, the way you analyze? Do you need to have tough conversations with your fellow directors about the skill sets? Do you need to maybe propose that you build a training module into your board process so that you can improve your directing skills as you go? Please complete the survey that is going to you know, come onto the screen um, as I close off. And if you want to contact us, please do. As Sadar, we are active in the education space of directors and educating directors um, on all of the different things I've touched on today and really wanting to explore those in depth. We help independent directors find positions and help companies find independent directors. Um, and then we also help guide boards because a critical part of this journey of directorship is to be guided, to grow and to develop. And so we have expertise in all of those areas. So thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful afternoon further. And hopefully we'll see you online again.